Hi, my name is Taylor Harvey. Hi, my name is Malcolm Flynn. Hi, my name is Bria Harris. And, and this, this is, is our, our TED, TED Talk. Talk. Do you think artistic representations of plants and animals have been around? If you answer that, we look all the way back to the dawn of time, where cavemen drew plants and animals on cave walls for communication and entertainment. Since then, art has developed, but we will be taking a look at two important artists of one of the most, most influential time periods of for zoology and botany and the Renaissance. The artists both have different perspectives on plants and animals in their period of time. One created his art for the purpose of learning and eventually was found to be so accurate that it accused the scientific study as the other used plants and animals as a sort of muse to create whimsical and creative pieces of the first artist we all know very well, Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci, most known for his work on the Mona Lisa. Born April 15, 1452, Leonardo da Vinci grew up to be one of the most important artists of all time, not only because of his art of humans, but his intricate works of plants and animals too. I was surprised to learn that Leonardo da Vinci had such a great hand in the works of zoology and botany. In the Renaissance time period, nature was made as a religion seeking God in nature, but Leonardo believed that man's role was simply to observe nature as attentively and completely as possible. His interest in botanical studies began in 1502, where da Vinci spent much of his time studying and drawing flowers and plants. Looking at works like The Virgin of the Rocks and The Annunciation show that he spent much time and effort making sure that his paintings were correct to the last detail, which make them nothing short of amazing. Because of this extensive detail, da Vinci's works are considered scientific masterpieces and can be used in many different botanical studies. Leonardo's studies of plants indicate that his knowledge of botanical structures far outweighed the leading authorities on the subject at the time. Leonardo devoted an entire book six of his Libro di Futura to the topic and planned a never published discourse on plants. He drew many plant sketches which, uh, with accompanying notes and executed a series of more finished drawings at, of plants, branches, and stems on single sheets, many of which are housed in the Royal Library at Windsor. Also, in the study of brambles, Leonardo visualized many optical and theoretical concerns he expressed in Libro di Futura. He manipulated graduations of red chalk and white heightening to capture the passing effects of illuminating and reflected light, the transparency of leaves, and the sun's power. In respect to animals, da Vinci revered them as he did plants. His interest in animals is enticed by the exact realism and life given to animals in his works of art. Leonardo's interest in birds, among other animals, was likely formed during his youth. His fondness of animals was so great that he was rumored to buy caged birds and free them. Leonardo made many studies of animals, with cats, dogs, and horses as frequent subjects. Leonardo relied on close observations at, of the animal and, at times, dissections of their underlying features. Leonardo would use these dissections of animals' body parts to compare them with human body parts. Leonardo compared the arms of men and monkeys and the legs of men and horses and, by doing so, became the pioneer in comparative anatomy. The interest that Leonardo showed in animals and their energetic and realistic depiction was unique in his time. The naturalistic and energetic depictions of animals in the art of Leonardo da Vinci stem from his love of animals and his dedication to scientific inquiry. Among the major innovations of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci no doubt had the most far-reaching research. Its impact was the rehabilitation and rediscovery of nature as a positive. Archimbolo is our second important artist of the Renaissance period. Born in Milan in 1527, he began as a stained glass window designer, and he later became the court portraitist for Ferdinand I at the Habsburg Court in Vienna, and later to Maximilian II and his son Rudolf II at the court in Bergu. He was also the court decorator in the costume design. St. Augustus of Saxony, who visited Vienna in 1570 and 1573, saw Archimbolo's work and commissioned a copy of his fourth Seasons which incorporates his own monarchic symbols. It was during this last phase of his career that he produced the composite portrait of Rudolf II, as well as his self-portrait of the Four Seasons. Giuseppe Archimboldo has one of the most creative minds of the Renaissance period, even modern time. Being an artist all his life, Archimboldo has experienced in many different artistic styles. His most famous work through art portraits and famously being entirely composed of plants and animals, he has two series of paintings, The Elements and The Four Seasons. The Elements, which was complete first, is composed of the paintings Air, Fire, Earth, and Water. Fire being the only one of the series that does not involve animals. Water takes the form of a court lady composed entirely of aquatic animals and shells, potentially terrible animals such as sharks, 
forms a woman's mouth with many other sea creatures. It's the most complex of either series. Like the other painting in both series, it can be identified as an imperial allegory that suggests that the emperor rules over the elements in the sea. Many studies of animals by Archer Bolden exist, and many of these studies were used as sources to create scene and earth. All the animals in the head were taken from life because the emperor gave Archer Bolden permission to draw creatures in his like Earth and Water in this series, air is also based on studies from nature. Many of the birds whose heads are seen in this painting were drawn by Archer Bodo along with other birds related species. However, because they're crowded together, the individual species represent, represented here are harder to identify. Other series, The Four Seasons, is just as complex. Being completely made up of plants, each portrait means something different. In the profile bust of summer, the cheek and the neck area are composed of large peach, quince, garlic, white onions, yellow beets, and white eggplant. The mouth and the lips are formed of cherries in the open pea pod, which imitate a row of teeth. All of the vegetables represented the new life and harvest occurring in the summertime. On is important as its earliest surviving representation of the season by Archer Bodo. This painting depicts gourds, apples, grapes, and other fall fruits and vegetables, including fall leaves. In the painting Winter, the rural fowl bust is composed entirely of a gnarly tree trunk. The nose is cracked growth of a branch moss forming the stumble of a beard and an intricate branches forming the messy hair in which an evergreen ivy grows. This old type figurative represented in winter symbolized the death and the cold and the bitterness that winter brings. Spring offers less surprises than other three seasons allegories. The form of the head is simply filled out with flowers, the breast with leaves. At the same time, however, spring surpasses all Archer Bodo composed heads in its riches of the species. 80 different variations of flowering plants can be counted. Archer Bodo's creative and fun designs prove to not only entertain for the time period, but also classy for modern times. The Renaissance time period possessed many different creative artists that made it as famous as it is. Our artists, though, especially showed us the importance of the representation of plants and animals in art. Da Vinci showed us the importance of the detail and appreciation of both, paving the way for later and more scientifically involved studies like botany and zoology, whereas Archimbolo showed us a, a, a more creative take on the subject and life of Core Painter and how he put his own creative twists on things to stand out from other artists and be remembered and respected for centuries to come. Though both artists had a different take on the subject, the matter remains that they changed the views of millions of people and how they view plants. Thanks for watching.